soon as it starts. All set. Sounds good. So let's take a motion to start our meeting. Can we repeat that motion, please? So moved. Second. That's awesome. Let's go down the list. Uh, uh, Member Linda Longbelio. Uh, yes. Longbelio, uh, yes. Uh, Member Kuchenbaum. Yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, yes. Member Ayala. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. Bennett, yes. Member Amos. Amos, yes. Am I missing anybody? Because I'm on my phone and I don't see the whole picture. Okay, I don't think we're missing anybody, and I vote yes. So let's go down our agenda. Um, what we have on our agenda is the bullying prevention and intervention plan that we reviewed last time. And I believe we had decided, if I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we had decided we would take this to the broader, the broader school committee. Now, uh, Brendan, I know yeah. like we all got a um, request asking if uh, some of the community of ours could look at this uh, plan and give us feedback. I don't know exactly how that would work. Did, did you wanna, if you don't mind, give us some feedback on what you would think, uh, the, the yeah. questions that were asked on, on, on regarding the situation? Uh, sure. can, I, can I make a point of order though? Um, uh, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, let me see, because I was just following down the list. I did not see it. If that is the case, we can do the... Yep, sorry, I skipped it. That's my fault. So let's do the approval of the minutes. Um, I have I have a motion, motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting on October 8th. Of, of October 8th. Do I have a motion for that? I just did, yep. Laura, come on. Second. That's awesome. Let's go down the list. Member Longbelio. Longbelio, yes. Member Kishenbaum. Kishenbaum, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, yes. Member Ayala. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. Bennett, yes. Member Amos. Amos, yes. And I vote yes. So that is unanimous. Um, back to the third item, which I had skipped the second item for, the bullying prevention. If uh, Brendan, you could go uh, maybe like give us some enlightenment on that particular question that was asked about that uh, that policy. Sure, and this came up uh, at our last meeting for the subcommittee uh, related to public comment on the plan. So I looked into that um, as far as what's required and what's not. So technically, we are, my understanding is we're only required to do public comment, um, public input, the first time the plan is uh, developed. So that's when this plan was originally developed. However, I think we should, in this case, put it out to public comment, and I know we have a tight window, and it has not been posted yet. We were hoping to get this on the next school committee meeting, which I believe is November 8th. Is that correct? I think it's the 9th. Uh, November 9th. 9th. 8th so, or 9th. Yes. Um, so we still do have time to put that up. Um, to Just full disclosure, I'm a little bit behind in that. Um, I did make the edits uh, that were recommended by the subcommittee to the document. Uh, and it's ready to go uh, onto our website um, for review. So I plan on doing that in the next, uh, probably tomorrow actually is when that will go up with a, a message corresponding. Uh, so, so that's the update. I think it will be a good chance. We changed it pretty drastically from the original. So I, I think we should treat it like a new plan because um, there are a lot of changes. And uh, just as a follow-up question, so if we're going to post it on a website and allow public comment, um, I'm assuming that would mean we should meet before our school committee meeting. So if there's any uh, additions or edits we, we take from the comments, we want to include it in. We want to have that meeting before the school committee meeting, right? That makes sense. Okay. So when we're planning on our next meeting, I, I just wanted to mention that so we take that into account. Um, well, with that being said, um, uh, someone can I ask a question about that? Sure. So it's this isn't it, this isn't a policy, Brendan. It's a it's a plan, correct? Correct. But does it still require two readings at the school committee before approval, or just one? Um, so this will be different in a, than a policy. You do not need to do the um, the multiple readings. Uh, the way we talked about it with this sub subcommittee is that this would be a recommendation, um, hopefully at the end of all of this, by the subcommittee um, to the full school committee uh, for approval. 
Okay, so that answers my question. I was thinking if it had to be, if it was going to go to the committee twice, then you could potentially open it for public comment after the first reading sure. at the school committee and then come back to it a second time. But you answered my question. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I have another follow up question. Where will it be posted so that the public can start the comments? And yeah. when, when should we expect it? And I'll talk, remind me to talk about the, um, the way the comments will work too, how people can submit comments. Um, it'll be on the main part of the website in the front page. And there'll also be a corresponding announcement uh, with a link to, to look at it. Um, and the way the public comment will work is it'll be uh, basically a Google form that people can fill out anonymously and give feedback for, for changes or ask questions. Or that type of thing. Okay. Um, and, and go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. Um, what is the duration that we wish to have uh, for the public comment? That was my question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could discuss that, I guess, as a subcommittee. Uh, I was, uh, I was yep. thinking if we had it up tomorrow, that a week would be sufficient, but um, we'd be open to ideas. So I'm just concerned about that that timeline, given the fact that we've got so many other things that are on the plate right now that are um, taking a, a more, for lack of a better term, a more pressing uh, agenda item for families and, and community members. Um, though this is no less important, and so my my thinking would be to um, to provide a, a sufficient amount of, of public comment time for people to really read through it, digest it, and also multitask during this this time that we're supposed to be focusing on our reopening plan. Um, I I don't want to short shrift this at all, um, and so you know having this paired at the same time is is going to be problematic. I think. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think it's important to have a, a good process that provides a lot of opportunity for comment. Um, and I think that makes it worth um, not waiting until not this coming school committee meeting, but perhaps the one after that um, to to uh, put it on the agenda. That makes I sense. Agree. Absolutely. absolutely. Taking our time to do this and, and, and make sure that it's absolutely uh, the best um, it, it can be um, is going to be more important than than getting it uh, out there quickly. I think yeah. that the things that needed to get done quickly, like the um, uh, the ability to report if there has been bullying um, for the students, um, I think those immediate things have been been done, and we can take our time with this one. Get it right. Can I ask? Um, from a building level perspective, is there any um, issue with taking beyond the, the November 9th meeting for approval? Yeah, so we, we actually have two of our principals um, on the meeting right now. So Liz Garden from Mayo and Crystal Breck. So either of you want to respond to that from a building perspective. I, my perspective would be the same as what's already been said. I, I think it's more important that we take the time to do it the right way than it is that we get it done uh, quickly, especially in our current situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree. And I, I guess um, my question is, too, um, when it is posted and you're gathering comments, I'm just, just for process-wise, like, what's are something gonna be done with those comments or is the plan gonna change or in you know oh yeah well yeah absolutely so i mean that's the whole purpose is to to get that real feedback and see if there's some things we missed or things we could do better uh, so you know now that we have this extra time we haven't uh, decided the timeline but uh that actually does uh work a lot better i think because uh, i could bring back the comments to this subcommittee and we could uh, discuss them and and see what might be better. I think that would be great. Yeah. Brent, Brendan, can I can I ask a request on the Google form? Mm -hmm. Can I is that is can we talk about that right now? Like what kind of feedback we're going to be looking for and from whom and so forth. It'd be helpful. Okay, so um, so let's just say what I'm hearing is that we want to bring this to the to the school committee for their approval. Let's say December. Um, I, I could be wrong with that assumption, but that's in my mind what I'm thinking. Um, if we were to publish this to uh, to the school website, you know, sometime next week with the Google form, if that's a good timeline for you to put together a questionnaire, 
Yep. Um, and then leave it open through through the holiday, through uh, through to our next meeting, essentially. And then in our next meeting, to discuss the the results sometime between now and the next school committee meeting in December, we would sit and we would discuss this. I don't know if that's possible. We might have to think about January based on the timeline and the holidays. But in the in the um, in the form, I would suggest that we ask some demographic questions of our of the people who are providing feedback. Uh, we might ask some questions about um, whether or not they're a student, uh, a faculty or staff member, uh, if they're just a member of our community, um, if they're uh, a teacher in the district. Um, so on and so forth. I think that information would be helpful so that it doesn't, it can be anonymous, of course, but I think that little bit of demographic information, age group, um, you know, maybe, maybe town um, might help shed some light on the, on the feedback that we get. Sure. I'd, I'd like to add alumni as one of the categories because I'd like to know the history of what kind of comments have been made over time yeah so so we're looking for um we're looking for feedback on the plan but i think uh making sure that we know uh generally who's giving us that feedback will get will help inform any any potential changes we make to our plan thank you i took notes on that laura those were good suggestions so Brendan, you've done a lot of these kind of surveys. What do you think is a good amount of time to get the with, with the audience that we're looking for to give feedback? What do you think is a good amount of time to give everyone so that we can give people a chance to get give, give us the feedback that they may want to give us and not have them miss the deadline? Yeah, well, I think I mean, like we were just saying, I'm happy we're moving to more, you know, about like the month of November probably would be at least that amount of time. Um, you know, we can just see. I mean. If we met prior to the December um, school committee meeting and just see what we have for, for comments at that point, I'll compile them in a way that makes sense for us to all review and we'll just see uh, what changes need to be made. So I think uh, the month of November, if we met, I mean, the last week of November possibly, uh, that might give us enough time. And give people enough time. If we do it till the last week of November, how much time do you think we as a subcommittee will have to take to go through all the comments? Um, I also want to make sure we have enough time to discuss and, and digest the feedback that we're getting. So yes. I would, if I could speak to that, I mean, I could envision with that demographic information that we could divvy up that the information, depending on the number of, of respondents that we get, um, we could say, okay, uh, a couple of us read through the comments from the alumni, a couple of us read through the comments from the, the faculty and staff, a couple of us read through the comments of the students and divide up the, the number of, res of respondent comments that we have. And then we can come back and report on those. So it might help us divide up the labor um, a little bit, presuming we get, you know, thousands and thousands of comments. Right. Right, and I'm looking to December as far as just the scheduling. Our school committee is scheduled for the 7th. Oh, sure. uh, Sorry, I forgot my microphone. <laughs> the Sterling has a, a special town meeting on the night of the 7th. Oh, uh, yeah. In that case, I'm to be honest, the 7th, if we're going to do the last week of November, I'm not sure if we're giving ourselves enough time to digest the feedback if we're trying to get it for the 7th. Sure. Yeah, I'd be open to whatever um, the committee would like. Thanksgiving. The the week of the 23rd is the week of Thanksgiving, which you just talked about keeping it open for. And then our meeting in December is the 7th, I think. Yeah. For now, it'll probably be so, the week, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if there's a town meeting, it has to be moved, right? So who knows what my guess is they move it to like Tuesday, but who knows? It's not up to us. Um, but that's not, I mean, I, I think then we might want to try to, I, I'm sure I'm in the minority. <laughs> it took me a minute to get into the call, but I, 
I just, I don't know if we, I don't know. I think there's, there's kind of a paralysis. You do want to get things right, but we also want to keep moving forward with things. And I hate to just keep pushing it off and pushing it off. The document says two weeks. I think that's personally a reasonable time to allow people to comment. And if they don't, they know how to get a hold of us later. Um, they know how to comment. I mean, it's a document that can be reviewed every year. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Um, a lot of time and thought went into creating the version that we started with back last year and it was ready to go to the school committee in march until covid derailed everything for how many months now six or eight months um i know i've gotten some emails asking where this plan is um not because i'm involved with this committee just because people are talking about other things and they've made a point to mention where's the plan there's no bullying plan we really need it um so i'm kind of concerned the more we talk about delaying it i think you know i know i'm probably in the mind Minority, and I didn't hear every moment of the conversation because I was a little late because I had technical issues. Um, but I, I just hate to hear us talking about, well, we need to keep it open until Thanksgiving and then our meetings in December and really we won't have time to review things by then. Like, I think we absolutely could get it done by December. I, I think we, it's reasonable to put up comments and we don't need to micromanage every question that Brandon puts on the survey either. It's open for feedback. I mean, I don't know how much we need to prescribe what questions we ask. I mean, demographic information is helpful. Um, but I think from there, I mean, people will have opinions or not. Um, I just, I, I hate to over prescribe what kind of information we're going to get back from people mm -hmm. and limit ourselves time wise. Um, could, could it's we... just my perspective, but I, I, I hate to, to basically pause the process because there is a holiday and then there's December and who knows what's going to happen between now and then. I just, Feel like we need to keep moving forward if we met as a committee like the monday after uh thanksgiving um would could we make that work i mean we could make it do if we if we issue the policy right away like by the by october by, by halloween or november 1st and give people you know, like two weeks that's the 14th or even two and a half weeks um you know that it seems to me two to two and a half weeks would suffice and we could meet once and if we need to twice um, after yeah. that. Um, yeah. Seems to me like we could do that. I do see what, I do agree with Member Gustafson that we should probably have it on the on the agenda for the December meeting. Uh, we should at least make that our goal. Because um, then we have to read it twice and they'll have feedback, I'm sure. And it's just going to be a process that I just hate to be paralyzed for, you know, over a year by the time we're done with all this, just because we want to get it perfect. You need to get it right, but I think it's a it's a flex. I mean, it's something that can be changed based on feedback. So I hear what you said. I hear I hear you absolutely, and and I do. I I would love to agree with you, um, and I do to a certain extent, and I'm I I can get on board very easily with what you said. But you just mentioned that there needs to be two readings. We were just discussing that before you came on that because it's a plan, and not a policy. It doesn't right. need two readings. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I'm sorry I missed that part. That's okay. I, but but are we wrong? I guess with your experience, are we wrong with that? I don't know. I haven't paid attention. I just assumed everything needed. It may not. I don't know if we have a separate policy for plans. I just assume that. They <laughs> I don't like... either. Actually, yeah. I was curious about that. I could swear I could be wrong. But I could swear that the last time we did the bullying prevention plan, we had two readings, but I could certainly be wrong about that. Um, and I mean, even though we call it a plan, is it really a policy? <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I, I would want to check with, I don't know, a, 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 a parliamentarian about that. Yeah, I think I think we can definitely if we open it for two weeks, I think it's a good amount of time for the community to feedback. Um, I just don't want to rush ourselves to having go through the co uh, comments and discussing. I think we can definitely squeeze in one mm -hmm. meeting before the December 7th, but trying to squeeze in two might be too much. Um, and we might mm -hmm. be trying to rush the discussion, which I, like I need we need to find the balance of not rushing, but also not delaying. Right. Right. So, that's something well, that I really think we should. And, but I think it, it doesn't yeah. hurt to have it on the agenda. If plans change, it changes, but it doesn't hurt to have it on the school agenda for December 7th. Well, right now we have a month until then. So today's the 29th and the first that someone mentioned is Sunday. So, I mean, obviously it wouldn't go out Sunday because that's not a work day, but, or a school day, but that's Sunday. So it's not that far away. Um, I if it's, I, um, if it's posted for the first two weeks of November, 
and then it would be the week of this November 16th that would be collating the responses. Is that mm -hmm. enough time that week before Thanksgiving um, to then attempt to meet as a subcommittee on November 30th or that that week of for the first week of December? I mean, it, it seems like that's a logical first step um, as long mm -hmm. as that's enough time to collate whatever is Or we could meet both of those from. weeks because those are two weeks apart. Yeah. The week of the yeah. 16th and the week of the 30th are two weeks apart, which we said we would be meeting about every two weeks, and they are yeah. both ahead of the December meeting. Yeah, I think so. yeah. that could work. My only question would be how long it would take to um, gather the public comment to be in a usable form for us to discuss. That'll be pretty quick. Um, okay. You know, it, it puts it right into a spreadsheet. I can easily sort things out and, and get them in the uh, usable form to you all. Great. So if we met on the a, a Thursday again, the 19th, for example, let's say that uh, feedback closed on the, I don't know, the 14th, which is a Saturday, or the 13th, um you know or even the monday the 16th would it be doable if we had a meeting on thursday the 19th uh to get that together yes for me it would be yeah would that be enough time for folks to take a look at it yes it would work yes. for me yeah so uh so, can you repeat that linda i'm sorry i would suggest would meeting on the 19th um, having having feedback close, I don't know, on the 14th, which is Saturday, or the 16th, which is a Monday, or you could do it the 13th, which is Friday, um, and then having and then having a meeting on the 19th, which is Thursday. The 16th is Monday. Thursday is the 19th. That would be mm -hmm. my suggestion. Mm -hmm. I think that's logical. Yep. Sorry. With a potential other meeting on the 3rd of December? Yeah, if need be. If need be? Yeah. Put that on the tentative agenda? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I have a, a question real quick. So um, uh, right now, though, uh, there is a, a plan that they yes. are utilizing. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so it's not like it's it's chaos and there's no plan and 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 people are saying things and and teachers are going well i'm not going to do anything about it because oh. there is a plan right so we don't there have to be a plan. like it's a terrified very, right it's a very outdated very poorly written in inconclusive plan that's why they had to do a sure. major overhaul oh it's absolutely very, it's a it's it's not a good plan and it's not implemented well to be honest that's why yeah. they had to redo it so drastically well, that, that, that actually brings about a great question. How exactly are the, once we approve of this, hopefully by December 7th in school committee, how does it get rolled out to the, you know, administrators and teachers? Yeah, so um, I'll speak to that. Uh, first, talking about the old plan. So we did actually coincidentally have a training yesterday for um, anybody that could be a uh, investigator. Of okay. bullying. It was uh, done by our um, uh, district lawyer, uh, Michael Joyce. So um, so that was a review of the policy, I'm um, sorry, the plan, and then also the investigation procedures and best practice. So it was actually a really well done training. Um, so that was just done. Um, the uh, piece about, I'm um, oh, sorry, what was the second part of that question, Krista? How did it get rolled out to teachers? Rolled, oh, yeah. So once this is approved, this we talked about this a little last time, there'll be um, uh, trainings that will be done uh, for teachers and then also there will be uh, standard trainings put together for kids uh, so they understand you know uh, all the language with bullying and all of this so uh, <clears throat> that all be done we're doing a lot virtually as you can imagine these days but um, I'll be responsible for putting that all together once the plan is finalized. I have a question regarding feedback. So I cannot see students reading this whole plan. Yeah. I think there are a handful of students that would do it, but I cannot see you getting a lot of student feedback based off reading this whole plan, especially from like middle school students and students of younger ages. So can we look at specific sections you want students to look at? And then I can sort of share that with them and sort of push them to look at those sections at least. So it's more focused feedback that you're getting, and that way you do at least get some student feedback. I think that's a good suggestion, Catherine. Um, 
you know, you know, I'll make sure that the the form is designed in a way that you can give feed, you know, as much or as little feedback as you want. You could talk about a section. I would say you would know best probably amongst your peer group who, what they would be most interested in. So, um, you know, we, we could probably weigh in on that as a subcommittee, but I, I mean, it's been a while since I was a, a high school student. So, um, I mean, I would say, you know, whatever section you think is best or, you know, I think it's a good idea though, encouraging students to give as much or as little feedback and, you know, that's, that will get more people, more kids to, to look at it. I don't know if there's anyone else that has anything to add. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, if that's the case, let's try to move on to our next item on our agenda. We wanted to start the policy review, and I believe we had started, if I remember correctly, the appreciation of diversity. Um, and there was a lot of discussion on that, so we can continue with our discussion on that particular policy. And I'm going to uh, project it onto the screen too. Uh, I'll pull it up. Is that readable for everybody? Um, could you? You make it a little bit larger? Yes. Better? Much, thank you. Okay. So I had a question about how we go about looking at this policy because it's um, pretty wide reaching uh and very kind of uh feeling you know it's, it's the feel of the learning environment um and i wondered if it would be useful to look at some other district um kind of wide-ranging uh stances on things like the strategic um uh, from the strategic plan but like the vision statement a mission statement the core values of the district and if that might be helpful with what we want to try to bring about to this I mean, the, the downside to, to that in my mind, like devil's advocate to, to that is just that the strate strategic plan is ending um, and we're about to begin the process of starting a new one. So I don't know how valid it is to take those kind of older ideas, but it is something that our district has been building on for the past five years, I think it was uh, being enacted. Um, so I don't know if anybody else would find that useful to to review along with this, or if that's just a rabbit hole. I think that um, I think that. I think the strategic plan uh, can become inspired by our policies versus the other way around. Um, that said, I'm, I'm not trying to con contradict what you're saying either because I do like your idea <laughs> that we're coming up with the other ideas out of something instead of out of you know, just our own personal preferences. but. Um, yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. It's just that I, I was thinking just so that we have a, a grounding in yeah. something. Yeah, fair enough. Something that we, we all are looking at versus, um, I don't know, just something to bring us together a bit more, focal point, I guess. Sorry to cut you off, Laura. <laughs> oh, no, no, you didn't at all, not at all. Do we really need the first sentence? No. I think where we got stuck, this is my interpretation, where we got stuck the last time and I was looking at the first sentence, is 
the first sentence is to, in my mind kind of more like an outcome globally minded productive caring all of that is sort of an outcome of education and our but i think that's more of a curricular issue and what we plan to do rather than an environment issue which is what i think this policy originally was but i could be wrong that's just my interpretation I mean, I like the globally minded, right? Which means that we're encouraging people to learn more about the entire globe and not kind of just just concentrating on cultures or, you know, that kind of thing. But but I, is the I, I goal mean, is the goal outcome or is the goal what it says in the second sentence where it says we yeah. provide a learning environment, which is what I think it was about. And we can change it. But I think those are two different things. Because I'm getting I'm getting stuck on the productive, caring, and compassionate. We definitely want those, but how do you? That there's no uh, what what's the uh, level of like uh, what do they call it? The smart goals? Like how is that assessed? So um so the whole the whole thing is for appreciation of diversity. So that's like the name. Mm -hmm. of the whole thing. So um, I'm thinking like um, like the Wachusett Regional School District in pursuit of um, developing globally minded, productive, caring, and compassionate members um, of society or compassionate members, yeah, I guess members of society, uh, but, uh, but adding in um, uh, the appreciation of diversity as one of the things in there. Um, and then putting that actually into that first sentence um, uh, strives to provide a learning environment that promotes. But uh, putting like uh, in, in pursuit to do this thing, we are providing this um, so that they can become appreciative people. Like that's in pursuit of becoming appreciative people, we are striving to do this. So, um, I would I would add those those words or uh, uh, something similar to those words just to that second that second sentence that used to be the first sentence, um, uh, and 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 make sure that it includes you know uh, appreciation. Now, if if that's already in there, like I have to read it over again. But if that's already part of that second sentence, then we don't need the first sentence. Yeah, yeah. I I don't quite follow you, but if what you're saying is that <laughs> sorry, if we, if, we, what we really need, if we what we really need is the second sentence, and we can get delete the first sentence, I'm totally on board with that. Um, I do want to make one other point, which I think I may have made last time. Um, when when we settle this when we settle this issue. Yeah, so I guess I guess um I guess what I was just trying to say is that if if we wanted to have a goal in there, mm -hmm. it can be like put into that first part instead of having it like a completely separate, you know, section of a goal. Mm -hmm. Um and it doesn't necessarily have to have all of those those words, but maybe something that um uh, combines all of that in pursuit to do this, we are going to provide this to the, to the, to the, um, to the students. Does that make more sense? Am I still just not well, getting myself across at all? Uh, yeah, I guess maybe I'm just not, <laughs> um, I might just not be, I don't know, following you for, you know, my, my own reasons, not, not anything you're saying. I don't know. Does any other, do other folks know what, what, well, um, yeah, someone okay. else explain in better words. <laughs> I don't know if this is right. It might be me. It might be me and my brain. But anyway, I think you're getting into things like strategic goals and vision then when you get into that, which is fine. But I, I think uh, then I go back to what is the goal of this policy? And when I first read the old one, which we can change, I really saw it as an environment thing rather than a curriculum yeah. or an I think so too. Yeah. yeah. And agree. so I think the first sentence that we have now, it speaks to good goals, but it gets into more strategic vision. What is the goal of our education? What are we yep. saying, wanting our students to leave with? And I think that's different than just an environment that says we support an environment or want to create an environment that, you know, is, is 
you know, where people are valued. I think that's right. different than mm -hmm. saying they will leave with this perspective. I think those are two different things. I, mm -hmm. I agree with you. And I think that's that's um, kind of kind of but like I was definitely not saying it uh, <clears throat> concisely. But but um, but the what is written there is about like the original one um, is about just like appreciation of diversity. It doesn't have <laughs> like, uh, you know, what we what we want and 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 what we want the outcome to be it's like we're going to appreciate this we're appreciating it that's what this is written for for just we do appreciate this um and so if we wanted to add more words to that we can add a couple things in there to just flesh it out a little bit but i don't think that we need as much as what we have uh in there so I, I agreed kind of what i was trying but i didn't say it correctly here now so, so I'm hearing, I'm hearing, um, I'm, he I'm hearing that that first sentence is something that really ought to be st stricken from the policy, but included potentially in some sort of strategic plan or goal or vision or something down the line. But the, but that the policy doesn't need to address that specifically, right? Is that what I'm hearing from from everybody? I think so. And I think there's probably other places that it could be better used. Yeah. That's my interpretation. Yes, yeah. I agree. I mean, that first sentence confuses me. Yeah. What the goal is. All right. So what are we going to do? We're looking at the second sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's look at the second sentence and then we'll go to the third after that. Since the first took so much time. Go away, Pepper. All right, strives to provide. So could I suggest that we um, strike strives to provide a learning environment that and just have it read the Wachusett Regional School District promotes, teaches, and encourages an appreciation and respect of diverse perspectives and identities. I like here. that. I like that. Or shall yeah, I like promote. That. Point. I love shall promote. I would feel better about shall promote. Um, I don't know. It just sounds better to me. Okay. But it's not a not a not a big deal. But I like shall promote. Okay. Teach and encourage. I do have one little thing at the very end of the sentence there that I just want to raise, so people can think about it. I totally agree with everything in the sentence. Um, I do wonder if we use the word globally, whether we're opening up a can of worms. And I think we should be aware, at least, that we could be opening it um, with people who who don't like, quote, globalists, like me, for example. <laughs> um, you know, um, I just I just think people should be aware of that. And I, you know. Well, I would even, so Linda, I would, I would even say, let's strike that last, after the comma, just strike the rest of that and just make it a period at the end of identities. That well, works for uh, me, but I don't know. I, but, yeah, go ahead. If I could be a devil's advocate for that. Yeah, um, sure. I think that part of what we had discussed previously was the idea that um, our students aren't going to be staying in Wachusett District forever mm -hmm. and ever on end. They're going to be right. heading out. Um, and so that's one part of it. But that also for the students that do stay in the district and put down roots here forever and that that they are um, they come out of this education knowing that that's part of the world and there's a wider world out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so that I think that was the idea that we were trying to get across that right. of um, kind of looking beyond our five towns of what mm -hmm. else exists. Mm -hmm. I like the idea. I just think it's redundant to say Wachusett Regional School District and at the end also say Wachusett District. So maybe it's the wording that I'm getting hung up on. I mean, they're doing two different things. Those I, two watch you sit. Uh, they are. When watch you sit comes up in that sentence, that they're doing two different jobs. But it, when when I see the phrase, I think it ties into the first sentence that we struck that had a broader goal rather than just the environment we're creating. So to me, it makes sense to strike it because I think it ties into what they we want their outcome to be versus what's going on in the district, which is what we do have control over. That's my perspective. What about, 
Yeah. We're gonna try to be consistent throughout the. Can we see the original? Uh, yeah. Just give me one more minute. Here. Can I raise I an idea up. though while he it. while he does mm -hmm. that, which is what if we said the Wachusett Regional School District shall uh, provide a, shall uh, wait a minute promote? To promote, teach, oh. and encourage an appreciation, respect of diverse perspectives and identities, both within the Wachusett District and beyond. What about that? Just a thought. Yeah. Or I think I like the within the what you said district and globally, whatever, but the within actually makes it a little bit more smoother reading in my opinion. Yeah, I would say both within the what you said district and beyond because we don't we want it to be both, you know, what you said, you know, the, the, the local community, the state, the, you know, the, you know, the different towns, the state, we want it to be, you know, both local, national and global. I mean, in our heart of hearts, I just. I think I like the ambiguity of that. <laughs> I like that. The ambiguity could come in handy. Inclusivity, and maybe. <laughs> inclusivity. There we go. And I, Thank you. Know, you. Sure, not even a word. <laughs> I want you to know that I truly wish that I didn't feel like we needed to consider any challenges with the word globally. I really do wish that. Um, but I just think I, who needs to trigger people who are looking to be triggered? <laughs> trigger isn't quite the right word, but perhaps I don't know. But. Um, yeah, so that would be my suggestion there. Oh, he's getting the original wording, good. Yeah, that's it. It was Okay. Yeah, that's all uh, right. Okay. And then uh Brendan, did you um hear the last part, that last clause, how we changed it? Mm, uh, um, I did, but I didn't get it. Could you just tell me that again, please? So I I think it was um after that last comma, um within the Wachusett district and beyond. That's right. Mm -hmm. Get rid of this. Okay. And then get rid of that part, yep. I'm on mute. I think you had said this, um, Lee, on the last meeting, um, and and so I'm, I'm I think I'm bringing it back from your ideas that this is a policy relating to pupil services, right? I think that was your yeah. your continuing to go back to that, right? This is not an educational policy, right? That's this, how I interpreted it. Yeah. Because that's what it said at the top. And I <laughs> feel like different right, than curriculum, yeah. education outcomes, etc. Yeah, and so that's why I think that. Uh, that the district for the for the students, right? This is a pupil service type of policy that we are promoting, teaching, and encouraging the appreciation. It, it, I think pulling out the learning environment um, was is important to do so because it's just you know how we service our kids. We do this. We promote them, we teach them, we encourage the appreciation and respect for diversity. So for me now, it reads a little bit more like a pupil services kind of statement versus the educational statement that we were kind of gravitating to before. Um, can I uh, just bring up something else? So the last sentence, um, so all students can expect to grow and learn without encourage uh, encountering harassment about individual differences. I feel like that is um, repetitive. Like I feel like they, all students can expect to grow and learn without encountering harassment, period. You know, I I like that because that about individual differences seems to only be talking about like, I don't know, like a like a particular issue that had come about. Exactly. That was a catchphrase. I'm looking when it was last done in 97. I was on committees at my college that talked about things like this. That was a, <laughs> a popular phrase at the time. So I'm guessing that might be why it's there. Makes sense. Yeah. I, I just was looking at the dates. <laughs> so yeah, that harassing? makes sense. Too. You so what if you the right word there because I feel like harassment is a really strong word and we mm. don't really want to experience any discrimination at all. And in order for it to be harassment, you have to reach a certain benchmark. Mm. So I feel like if we use a less strong word, it will encourage less strong be like I don't I don't know if that means well sense. how about how about discrimination? 
or, or is that is that big too? Or I think that can... might be big. Is there a word for like obstacles or hurdles so that mm -hmm. it's a little bit more like uh you know common and without the like like what we just heard without having to have certain you know criteria for it to be under a certain categorization like discrimination or harassment. So could we could would it be appropriate here to identify the levels of um of uh concern of areas of concern like for example we should say students can expect to grow and learn without encountering prejudice bias discrimination mm. harassment or bullying right just like put them all out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like that list yeah. it yeah listen i like that and and I think that that bias is a new word that probably didn't exist back mm -hmm. in 1997 that I think it did not huge to include in our policy. Yeah, yeah. It, it existed, but it, you know, wasn't oh. used as much. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Prejudice was used much more often. Yeah. 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 What was the third word you said there, Laura? Sorry, I missed that. Discrimination. Uh, discrimination. Oh, Prejudice, Harass bias, discrimination, harassment, bullying. That's what I wrote down. Oh, right. right. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? bullying. Bullying. How about Could it be or and not and? Say that again, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it could be or and not and, right? Because it doesn't have to be all of them together at once, but each, any one of these, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bravo. Any form, can we add any form of mm -hmm. prejudice, bias, discrimination? Yeah, I like that. Any form of. Right. That would be verbal, emotional, any form. Uh, and I wonder, maybe to round that out, because that's saying what we don't want to happen. I wonder if we can, um, and I have an idea for a statement where it could be more positively stated about, here's what we would want. Uh, let me just put an idea here. This came from the original slides of one of our first <coughs> meetings. We should have to make that smaller. Uh, yeah. Just something yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. I think that's a could that I was be thinking like, about that. I was thinking like valued and but that's in the yeah. first half. So that I like that. So my only thought about that is that it then gets into more of a educational uh, and maybe not pupil services um, piece of it, true. right? The visioning the, the visioning and the goals. That's true. But... Hmm. We say free from, free from any form uh, without encountering. I like that. Never mind. I retract that comment. Could it be like almost like a free form of all these uh, lists, uh, such that every student and adult in the school community feels a sense of belonging? Ooh, I like that belonging word. I like yeah. that. Yes, something like that. Yes. So what was the change there? Um, I, I was just meaning it almost as if like that the second oh. sentence almost the third sentence becomes the conclusion of the second, right? So if you add in mm -hmm. the list of free from so, so such that every student and adult in the community feels a sense of belonging, connection, and safety. So that it's almost a goal of that first, first mm -hmm. part. Yeah. I like that because that's a positive way to... Um, phrase it um i think that's good i think that's that it's really still broad enough that it can be construed as environment like a safe environment and a belonging where your opinion is valued rather than an outcome so in my opinion but i know i'm just one of us yeah no i i agree with what you're saying there because um i think those those help us to measure whether or not uh, something is happening to a student if if a student is is in, in in identifying something that's happening to them as uh, discrimination or bullying, it would manifest as not being not feeling belonging, not feeling connected, not feeling right. safe. Right, all of right. those things. So that would be a way to measure whether or not um, I don't know, just get valid, adding validity mm -hmm. to a complaint. Yeah. Can I um, ask, a, it's just a word question. I'm just reading it ahead again. Um, is, do you think it's necessary to specify every student and adult or just every member of the school community? I think member of the school community would work. 
I'm I'm just playing with words. It just it's, like it's a wordsmithing it's, it's thing. Shorter. That's shorter, and I think that that's always good to be. It's always good to be shorter if you can. I mean, there might be a reason. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there as I'm looking at it. And I think member also implies belonging, so I think that's also good. I also like the fact because sometimes when you read student and adult, you're thinking to yourself, but some students are, you know, young adults. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Should, should the beginning of that sentence say all students can then? Like, I don't really like the beginning of that sentence. I don't know, maybe others like it, but. Should expect or. Pepper. Sit. All students should expect to grow. I mean, instead of can. But, but we changed, uh, maybe I'm reading it wrong, such that every member of the school community, and in the beginning all we say all students well. can, students, should we say all members of the... Yeah, do we need to say all? Because we didn't start off with that first one with all. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, the students should expect or something? You could say students should expect to grow and learn without encountering any form of... But let's see... Okay, no, I think that's good. No, I like that. Okay. Students should expect. I, I think that there is a different um, question. On yeah, that. I, this with the word students at the beginning kind of contradicts because we just put in every member of the school community in that sentence. Uh huh. Right. Hmm. The second sentence has all students also. So, yeah. Should we say every member of the school community? Well, I, I'm thinking it should say that. Except every, for we were expecting the uh, teachers and the cafeteria workers. And the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, mean, I think it should yeah, apply but, to all, but it is a people services policy. So then you yeah, get into yeah. semantics. Yeah, all members of the school community. But, but, I, but with, our, with our second sentence, what is the purpose of our first sentence? And this is pupil services. This isn't. This isn't for the whole, the whole community, right? I don't. I just wanted to be it, yeah. direct in our wording. Yeah. I think since it is pupil services, it does need to say all students. Okay. Yeah. I think that's right. I think so that the hard. hope is is it the hope that if the students are expected to can expect to grow and learn, et cetera, that that will that that expectation is what will make the school com community, members of the school community feel a sense of belonging, connection, and safety. Because if that's not mm. supposed to be the direct line, then there needs to be something in between. Exactly, yeah. So is if all students, that expectation for all students going to create that sense of belonging for all community members? And yeah. I, I think uh. there needs to be a separation between those two ideas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can't put every member of the school community in there and have the beginning saying all students. Huh. That's a good point. That yeah. goes back to the purpose of the policy if it's limited. I mean, which I don't know. If, I don't know if I have enough information to answer that. Yeah. We can make it whatever we want. But I know historically, I don't know if pupil services has to only address pupil services. And then there's some other mm -hmm. policy that addresses overall climate of the district somewhere else mm -hmm. um, that I don't know. But about. I think, you know what I think? I think, though, that, you know, all students can expect to grow and learn without encountering any form of prejudice, bias, discrimination, bullying or harassment, such that every member of the school community feels a sense of belonging, connection and safety. And I sort of feel like if every member of the school community Such feels that way, then it's good for the students. Um, it sort of creates, it's, it's again, it's sort of like the overall environment. Um, right, I was, well, I was just gonna say I agree, Linda, because I think mm -hmm. they are so intertwined, right? A school culture yeah. and the, the uh, <clears throat> and beliefs of the adults, you know, have to be uh, matched with this, otherwise it's not a positive school culture or, right. you know, so. So that's why I was, was thinking maybe, you know, we get it more the, the wider school culture, but it also might be more limited, you know. Um, I think we can go either way with this. I, I think that, um, I mean, really my, my only issue, it, it's not with the substance, it's just the cause and effect hmm. of that, that sentence structure. That, that's really all that I'm, I'm questioning because it looks like the students are affecting the entire school community's 
community sense of belonging. And yeah, we want the whole school community to, to have that, but is it all hinging on the students' expectation to grow and learn <laughs> with, et cetera? And I, it just feels like there's like a, a little dot that's missing bringing from that first idea to the, the next. And I was hoping that I would come up with a solution while I was talking there and I did not. <laughs> can it just be, can it just be like, yeah. so that they feel a sense of belonging, connection and safety? Cause we've already mentioned the students mm -hmm. so that they sure. feel this. We could, it would, that would then exclude other members of the school community. But uh, I do see people's point that this is a, a pupil services policy. Yeah. Um, I do see that point. Um, I can see it both ways, honestly. <laughs> I really would be wondering, you know, like you lose the individuality part of it, right? Like, because majority might feel a certain way, but then where we're, the whole point of appreciation of diversity is to protect the minority. And also to, to be make a better majority, to make the kids in the majority right. better human beings. Um, so, okay. so, so how about so that such that every member feels? Or how about every individual? There we go. Every individual there we go. feels a sense <laughs> of, of belonging. There we go. I like that. Let's go for I, it. Yeah, I would be willing to bet. I haven't looked at it exactly but the the policy about um the like hate crimes i think that that might address that wider school community aspect and if it doesn't maybe that's where it should of, of having every member of the school community um so i, I just i think that there are other policies mm -hmm. yeah. that we are actually you know looking to update to where we can fit in so let's not lose that good <laughs> Maybe make a feeling language. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion about grow and learn? <clears throat> That's that part of the, the sentence. Um, all students can expect to participate and engage in school activities, educational activities without entering any encountering any form. So grow and learn, like those are curricular. Those are curricular, right? We want them to be able to participate and engage in all school-related activities. Yeah, I like the school-related activities because mm -hmm. educational activities kind of limits it. Yeah. Ah, good point. So, and, and I think it just, um, yeah, I think it just validates this policy to every <coughs> You know, yep. whether it's a sporting activity or a chess club or, you know, whatever. Right. I like it. Yeah, I was just mm -hmm. going to say that. I like it. Can yep. we get rid of all the things that are marked off there and then and then read it? <laughs> yeah, that would help. Thank you. It's it's driving my eyes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be inclusive in the uh, wording here. Well, it's useful. Uh, thank you. It. I appreciate yes, it while we're working. Absolutely. It adds some dimension. Because I'm a visual person and I, yeah. I forget what I, you know, it helps to see where we were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you know what? It's funny. It's when you start entering into a circular conversation because at one point I was like, oh my God, we're going to end up with the same policy we started with. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that too. I'm like, oh, it's happening. <laughs> um, the word the word committee is still struck uh, yeah. Yeah, the in the first sentence. sentence. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. That's driving everyone nuts there. Okay, great. I clearly can't talk today. It's been a long week. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I just keep thinking of Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> and beyond. I hear you. I do. I do. I don't mind that though. You know, no, it's cute. It's, it's good. I appreciate that. We could have an emoji right next to it. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> when do we get to add those to policies? That would be uh, we should be doing that. that would be so add fun. emojis. <laughs> I think we need that right now. It would add some levity to life. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. There we go. Ah! Yes! <laughs> there we go. That's how we bring it to the school committee. It's complete. <laughs> Is there a policy against that? <laughs> I think we should put that in the document Look, that we provided. We have to go with the times. In 2020, we talk with emojis. It needs to be in there. Uh, truth. Truth. Really, I, I think we need to put that in the corner of the one we send to the whole school committee just because it might add some fun to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Not fun, but I think, you know. Mm -hmm. They're long meetings. <laughs> well, they're long <laughs> meetings. A little yeah, levity would, would be nice. Exactly. <laughs> so my last thing is, can we make these three distinct, for lack of a better word, paragraphs so that they read individually? Because I think each one of them can stand alone. So, so the last sentence needs to be its own paragraph. Yeah, students. I think so because I, I I agree because I think yeah, one is doing all and one is just doing students, one is doing all members. Yeah. Uh, do we need to make a motion to accept the? Uh, yes, we do. If you're ready, so I I'm ready I, today. Uh, can I, I ask one more thing? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is that bad to interrupt that motion? No, no. <laughs> um, uh, just in that last sentence about all students and then all school related would it be appropriate to change that second all to any um i'm probably yeah. it's yeah. that yes i think that's fine that's fine yep all right linda you make the motion then i love there's other grammar people around it's so fun. <laughs> thank you all i'm sorry i'm sorry. I move that, um, to, that we no, we're changing the second all, all. No, no, yeah. no, leave that any. <laughs> um, we're good, we're good in with the that first, one. The first yeah, line the of the third one. sentence. Yeah. All students can expect to participate in any school-related activities. Yes, I see what Of course, means. then we have two any's, but that's Oh, okay. my goodness. <laughs> that's better, though. They're different lines, so it looks okay. Yes, any yes, better you, can't really fly. <laughs> you can't really change that second any to all. That wouldn't make sense. No, it's fine. And they're different lines, right. so it doesn't look as bad. <laughs> it's fine. Apologies right. to anyone watching this right now who's not you know, into grammar, but <laughs> hey, for being a um, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. So then Do I you have to put make... any in there? Oh. All students can expect to participate in school related activities without encountering. Just get rid of it. I think <laughs> Throw it we out. could take out yeah, I agree. Without encountering Well, I think what we meant was that we meant emotional, physical, yeah. verbal forms. That's what we wanted any form. Oh, no, did we mess it up? Did I mess it up? Related. Keep that any. Right. That's good. Put it in. Yeah. All no. students can expect to participate in school related activities without encountering any fun. I think it's I, I think that, that first any is not doing that much work. It's not necessary. Personally. We can take it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but the the next any is is important. It's very important. Yeah. yeah. Should we include um, the verbal, physical? Should we include that with any form? I think any form is good because I, I think, think we don't want to be. Yeah, because we want to have flexibility of in interpreting that because heaven only knows. And as we just <laughs> saw, language changes over time. Yep. And yep. there might be yep. some new term that comes up that we haven't thought of. Yep. I agree. Okay. Or yep. something that someone interprets as prejudice, mm -hmm. bias, discrimination, or whatever that we haven't thought of. So. Yep. Exactly. I think this is more broad and allows for more gives you flexibility. Yep. Yeah, flexibility. That's what I was going for. Thank you. Yep. So then I'd like to make a motion to um actually help me out here. Do we send this to the school school committee for approval? For yes. I believe that's yes. Okay. I'm gonna need you guys help to know what I actually said so I can write it for the minute. <laughs> I'll, I'll take this part. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Can we have a second? A second. second. <laughs> awesome. Let's go down the list. Member Nabon Galil. Yes. Mem Member Christian Baum. Yes. Member Woodland. Yes. Member Ayala. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. 
Bennett, yes. Member Amos? Yes. And I vote yes also. So oh, unanimous. Hey, wait, assuming oh. you missed me. <laughs> oh, member, yes, you joined in like sorry, I didn't have you written down. I'm on my phone. So you're 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 mini minuscule right now. So sorry. member Yes. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I was late because of my technical issues. I couldn't find a link. Oh, no problem. I was having I before it. joining in too. So no problem. So let's see now. We have, I like to, <coughs> I like to run too late because then I feel like we're, we're fighting with uh, being too tired. But let's try to get mm. the next, uh, next uh, policy on. Which one? I believe we have, I'm just trying to find my agenda. I just wrong button by mistake. There's a school ceremonies one and a safe school um, for, uh, of hate crimes, harassment, et cetera. Anybody uh, want to? They're both long. Uh, I would like to make the motion that we, um, we address policy 6437, promoting civil rights and prohibiting harassment, discrimination, and hate crimes. Let's do that one. Anybody do we have a second? Second. Awesome. Do we have to vote on this? I don't think we do. I don't think you need a motion. Do. I don't think we no. had to. So okay. let's just follow on that policy. Uh, Brendan, will you be able to share your screen again? I will. Yep. Is this the one that we would... I can't talk. Never mind. Hold on. I'm... Oh, I'm on. Okay. Is this the one that we would use some of the similar language for because <laughs> it talks about the hate crimes that was my thought yeah um but it was an it's much longer un though, so. informed thought <laughs> okay yeah, so, well, does, do the members want to take about three or four minutes just to read through the whole thing first so that yeah. We don't get into conversations yeah. about fast yeah. paragraphs and find out that 10 paragraphs down <laughs> doing something else. yeah yeah so if we want to just take a five minutes to just read through the whole thing. So, and then I'll come back in five minutes and ask if people are ready. Sounds good.
And just let me know if I'm scrolling too fast or slow. I'm gonna just be on it. Well, Just let me know if anybody needs more time. I'm good for the, uh, the first two pages. Wait, is there a third page? I'm I'm getting a little confused now. I'm sorry. There are actually six. So oh, six. Oh boy. Okay. We could, yes, we, <laughs> we could decide. I mean, we could chunk it. You know, whatever makes sense. Can I can I pause our reading for a minute because I have a couple of questions about it. Sure, go ahead, and that could give others time while you're asking the question to keep reading. Yeah, I mean, I so one. This seems like a blurring between policy and procedure. Mm -hmm. and I think that this needs to be parsed out between what is policy <clears throat> and what is procedure, because the policy is really what we're trying to approve here. But the procedure, um, I think, is a, is a little bit different, how that it gets implemented. And I think that there's a lot in here that is procedural um, and I think is is um, not really what what we want to get into. The second point that I'd like to make is that I think that this probably requires review by um, a lawyer simply because of so many uh, statutes and laws that are on the books that pertain to a policy. We don't want to make sure, we want to make sure that our policies are in line with any mm -hmm. legal um, verbiage that's needed. So I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering if if we want to make the recommendation to 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 send this <clears throat> to a professional to look over to make sure that we've covered the, the law um and and then maybe figure out how to parse out the policy the procedure piece so that we're just focusing in on the policy i have a question related but yeah I, my, I, I, my related question is that I went, I wonder if there was sample policies because this reads and it makes a reference mm -hmm. at the end. So I went to the MASC site and there's like five policies. It has this broken up into five or six policies and it seems like something that they, maybe we need to, I don't know if we need to consider that, but they have separate policies on non-discrimination, non-discrimination on sex, harassment, non-discrimination based on disability. Um, 
all separate policies. Um, and I don't know if that's necessary, but they have, it seemed like something that probably we have some specific legal language that's baked into some of this that we have to follow. And in theirs, it does include some of the, the procedural processes. So I wonder if that comes from a state law or something of sorts that, you know, is a legal advice to include. Um, but that was one of my first questions in terms of what exists currently. Um, you know, I, I don't know, but I, we historically do not follow their numbering of policies, which is a bit confusing, but I was just looking topically and they mm. have, I think, five different ones that address things that are all in this one. It, it That is a good point, I think. I mean, this is a lot in one policy and I oh, recommendation or requirements are. I also was wondering how much of the um, revised bullying plan uh, impacts yeah. the procedures outlined in here. Ooh, well, I, I was just about to ask that question to follow up to Malia's follow-up question. Because it says at the last line, the district has a policy of the anti-bullying policy that meets the legal requirements. So do we need to also have that done before we address this policy? <laughs> We're addressing whatever legal requirements there are in the other policy, and we're not addressing it in this one. And this was last reviewed in 11, so that's been nine years. Mm -hmm. That's a while. So, Brendan, would that be a possibility to have this kind of a... Uh, like, you try to figure out... I guess it was multiple questions. One is... There was multiple different policies on the MSC website. So how is this kind of, is this incorporating all of it in one? Is this only one portion of it? Do and what are the leg legalities of this one to now for in 2020? Falcons, 30 points a game. Right. And I mean, I'm willing to call them and ask them that. I know Brandon's very busy, so I mean, I'm happy to call and ask them what their current related policies are, but that's not an attorney question. But um, yeah. And, and just, you know, I think it's easier to follow in this case, this is so dense as we're saying, and these, all of these topics are so important on their own. So I think for me as an administrator, it's easier to follow one um, and to parse it out. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it looks like the MASD would agree with that. It, it's easier to follow one policy and parse it out instead of having multiple oh. policies. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, um, it, I'm leaning towards it. I haven't read closely what the MASC has, but I'm leaning towards uh, what Malaya is saying um, is laid out with them. And generally, I tend to agree with how they lay out policy, and we're trying to align as much as possible with those. Right. Policies. I actually had a general related question to that since we already amended a policy. Do we, is the district, I, I'm just going to say this, the question, without complicating things, but is the district renaming our policies to be in accordance with theirs? Because I have heard various um, statements about that the past couple of years. And if we are amending policies and the district is trying to move toward aligning titles and numbering with theirs, it would make sense to make sure that our revised policies um, concur in that direction. But I didn't know for sure if that was happening or not. So that may be a bigger question. Um, but I recall some discussion of whether we were renumbering our policies or not, because we are the only district in the state that has our unique numbering. <laughs> it's a logistical question. You don't need to have the answer today. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, you know, we have quite a few members from EdSub here, actually. Um, as far as I know, we we haven't been okay. pursuing that. doesn't mean we shouldn't. Hmm. I it's just, I mean, it takes time, but I just, I just didn't know for sure if we were, because it just seems like a, it's come up several times just since I've been on the committee and I don't know that we've come up with a, you know, I'm not in management, so I, I don't know where those discussions landed, but it's just a question as we're redoing things, if we need to be considering that as well. Um, but anyways, that's not the content of the policy, so. Um. Just to to ask, like, um, if we, I mean, do we have uh, a lawyer that that could go over these? Like Laura was uh, suggesting that we have a lawyer look at it. Is that a possibility to make sure that all mm -hmm. of those? Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. So if that's an easy thing 
to do well not easy but if that is something that we have at our disposal i definitely think that that's something that would help with this uh, at this point well, make I have sure a that all it's the language like meets chicken and the egg question Sh uh, when when brendan you were saying multiple policies are the way the masc has set it up is better but we have one big one should we be trying to split it up before we go to the lawyers or this yeah. is something mm -hmm. we want the lawyers to see yeah. first? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, that's right. I think yeah. we should I, bring the lawyers as revised the situation as we can, or at least our plan. Because yeah. it's money and time. <laughs> yeah, I think I think if we revise this and then bring in the lawyers, it'll be easier for them to address you know our real concerns. Um, or uh, or, yeah. or if we decide we're gonna follow certain sample policies as our starting point at least then we have a starting point and can you know start there because there's a lot of language and like i said they mm -hmm. have six different policies and that probably doesn't touch on everything in this one but those are just so why don't looking we do at their list we need to do with the educational subcommittee where we come up with our own policy maybe take some of sample policies that kind of mi mimic that other schools have used that we want to kind of mm -hmm. you know take from and then we can incorporate the changes yeah and then have a lawyer review it over yeah i have i would do make changes and then have a lawyer review it yeah yeah so where were you thinking of splitting it up I, it's hard to say until we i mean i haven't read all their list but as i said they they have one i'm looking at their list right now at least one section of their list under you know this type of thing and they have non-discrimination in general non-discrimination on the basis of sex harassment non-discrimination on the basis of disability um and they had another one but it might have been on another page but that's just under one section that's five different policies um, yeah you think procedurally what we've done is in the past in different subcommittees we've taken <clears throat> MASC but then looked at a couple of school districts that we know have done a good job with their policies taken from what they have done and then compared to what we have and incorporated and changed it accordingly and then sent it to the lawyer to review okay so, all right. And I said, there's more than that because I didn't look at every section of their policy section. That was just the logical place that I started with. Um, I can go through that more, but that's what I have so far. Yeah, I can also you know, do some homework on this. If, uh, if it's starting to parse it out, maybe coming up with a possible uh, starting point for the next meeting. Yeah. Do you Brandon, do you call MASC and deal with them, or would it be helpful if one of us did that to find out what, you know, what policies they would suggest might fall under this? Um, I certainly could, but no, um, I mean I can. I'm I'm asking because sure. I know you're very busy and, <laughs> and I Wait, know the list, yeah. so I'm happy to. But I don't know what the normal process is. Sure, you know, um, or anyone I'll, else, but <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll start. Um, I'll talk to Rebecca. Uh, you know, uh, early next week probably. And we might be able to just do it pretty quickly. Yeah. And if not, I'll let you know, Malaya. Okay. If, I, okay. if that's all right. Or anyone else can. I just, I've just found the list. So I was just offering, but I don't really need to be the one to do it. I just know you're very busy. And I appreciate the offer very much. So then, do I have the action steps right that we'll be reaching out to the MASC to look at their, the way that their policies, um, are separated out to touch on the main ideas, the main points of, of this uh, policy 6437. And that we'll also look at other examples from other districts that we feel have done a good job. Um, and then at some later date, after we discuss those parts, we'll send it to lawyers. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. Do we want to make assignments? Yeah, that's why I was. <laughs> Is that I mean, inappropriate? That's why I, was, or? I think that's to fine. Contact them or do more research if necessary. Because I'm, I mean, like I said, I'm looking at the list. Um, but they also have a policy service where apparently they will send you policies from other districts on certain topics. Hmm. Which I didn't know about till I was just reading their policy section, and they have a note about that. So. 
Uh, interesting. I mean, I think we should identify a couple of places that we want to take from. I know in the past we've like mm -hmm. looked at Lexington's, we've looked at Shrewsbury, we looked at Hopkinton. So okay. we want we want to identify a couple of places that, you know, for our next meeting we look at what they have done with these kind of policies, and then we can take from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep. So just do different people want to look at different districts, or do we? I don't know what the best process is. Um, I, or do we all I, just want to look at them all, which is fine. I just don't know what the best process is. I think it's, I mean, it's I, best if we get these beforehand, right? So that we yeah. all have it and we can like, if we have yeah. time to review it before the meeting, of course, we're going to do yeah. screen sharing like we're doing now, but yep. it'll give us a little bit more time yep. if it's just shared before the meeting. So then we'll, however we assemble these lists, of policies and examples, we'll ask Rebecca to distribute them ahead of the November 19th. Do we want to have that ready for that same meeting that we would be discussing the feedback on the bullying prevention and intervention plan? I think we can put it on our agenda. If we don't get a lot of comments, we can get to it. But if we get a lot of comments, we might have to push it out. All right. Can I ask a, a, a question? This might be silly. No silly so okay. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, who is the equity coordinator? Right here. That's me. That's you? <laughs> yes. OK. I thought that was uh, social, emotional. OK. I wasn't. Yeah. Okay. Brendan has uh, many hats in our district. I guess so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. He does because, uh, yeah. That's what they did. You can come in one day with all your hats on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to you about how I can never find a hat to fit me later. But uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was fine. I like to be busy. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a good thing. A good thing you like to be busy. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the right district for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely. Um. So do we uh, go on to, if we have a to-do for this, um, does that mean we go on to, let's see now, we can go on to the school ceremonies and observances policy um, and give our friends maybe a couple minutes to read that. I highly doubt we're going to get through this whole policy tonight, but at least we can read through it, maybe have a couple of comments, and then, then really decide on our next meeting. It sounds like the 19th, but then we can really decide on our next meeting and adjourn for the night. Um, Sounds good. If everyone wants to take five minutes to read through the school ceremonies <clears> and, <throat> and then and then we'll start talking about it. Great. And I, I can put the link in the chat if you want to um, look on your own tab too. Yeah, and this one's only two pages. <laughs> Hello. Can you scroll back up a little bit? Okay. Sorry, that was a little too fast for me. Oh, wait. oh, now I can see. No, wait. I had to scroll down. That's all. I'm sorry. You good? I'm good. Yep.
Are people ready to scroll down a little bit more? Let's click the next page I'll go to. And this is the end. Well. I have a question, and it's a, a classically nitpicky one. Um, I, I I come from another state, but aren't we in a commonwealth? Shouldn't that first line be that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, this policy, um, I just answered my previous question about renumbering. The IMD that's under it is the MASC number. So maybe that's how they were referencing it last year when they did this. Sure. Just a just a notation that I just noticed when I looked it up. Hmm. And there is an MASC policy about this numbered IMD. Huh. So in my first reading of this, I see no nothing glaring that um, seems like an oversight or um, or something that uh, that stands out as missing. In fact, I like the, the wording that it, it talks about uh, down at the bottom where the objective teaching of such uh, religions and, and things, uh, the objective, what does it say, factual and objective teaching about religion and religious holidays is, is fine. Um, I think mm -hmm. that that's that's necessary and appropriate given the, the standards that are being mm -hmm. uh, put out by this by the commonwealth and so forth but um up at the top i would say in keeping with our last policy that we amended the wachusett regional school committee should strike that committee and say district mm -hmm. i agree i guess this is in good shape because it was reviewed in march of 19 2019 yeah. oh yeah no i i like this i think it's good i really can't think of any issues either So, do we want to just we, leave it alone then? <laughs> in our first reading to send it to. <laughs> yeah, I was just reading the MASC policy, and three quarters of this is word for word from there. So uh -huh. I'm guessing they did that last year. Um, mm -hmm. I did have a question about it, but it, since it's mostly theirs, then I don't think my question's really relevant. But <laughs> my. I'll just tell you my question, but I really don't think it's relevant after reading theirs because I'm sure this sounds like it's one that was just taken from state policies. Mm -hmm. um, my what? It's not a question. I'll say it's an observation. Um, that the thing that bothered me about this, and it did when I I remembered reading this in the past. It's fine. Um, it, the thing that bothers me is that it focuses on not observing holidays and not using any you don't need to use religious themes or no you're not using certain themes which i appreciate but it also completely misses the opportunity of allowing students to share and learn about other cultures because not all holidays are religious so i thought that was a really interesting there's a lot of them that have cultural aspects and i i hope that the way it reads i hope it doesn't prohibit students from um doing that or from being encouraged to discuss their, um, you know, whatever their family celebrates or doesn't. I think um, the, the last paragraph that Laura pointed out might address yeah. that. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I think that I think it includes the the ability to to teach mm -hmm. uh, about those things. Yeah. yeah. 
I that, think so. that was my only thought in reading it that it focuses on don't do this and don't do that and that's mm -hmm. i understand legally why they do that but i also think there's a lot of opportunity in including allowing people to discuss things and i hate for someone to not because they thought they'd be breaking this but it's it's not yeah. a I mean, I'm well, not going to argue about it. It's. I think it's if, fine. Malia, if, we wanted, if I could, if I could speak to that in number three, in point number three, down at the last yeah. sentence. Yeah. Uh, I, it, it feels like it starts out with the arts, like with the music program, yeah. the art program, and so forth. That last sentence says that if an individual student chooses to use a religious personage event or something, <clears> um, <throat> I'm wondering if we could reiterate something like that, the spirit of that sentence, down at the bottom, that if a student chooses to offer up insight yeah. um, during such conversation that it would be welcome yeah. and um you know i, I guess i guess I, that's where i was thinking i mean it is there hmm. so it's fine and again the language is almost identical to the masc policy yeah. except for the last paragraph um so it's probably one of those things we just had to do this way but in I all mean, the other I really discussions like that point though, Malia. i really like this point because we're in, in one our, policy we're encouraging individuality and we're encouraging yeah. but at the at this one it's almost as if well we're not expecting the student to speak about their individuality or their right. culture mm -hmm. i mean i point. guess that's what i where i was going that in all of our others we're promoting talking about and learning about and learning about the global perspective and in this one which is apparently based on state language where it's basically shutting any of that down and actually i can tell you a couple of years ago i remember when this was uh, it must have been when this language was adopted I remember a few years back when we were in elementary school, the year they decided they couldn't do Christmas songs in the Christmas pageant. And it wasn't a pageant, it was just among others. They actually had songs from all different cultures, but there was a big thing about, well, we can no longer do Christmas songs, any mm -hmm. at all, even if we're not using them for religion. And like they were very, they had to redo some things and it was a very, it was, it was, I don't know, so, it just seems in contrast, it's not, Chris, I hate to use Christmas as an example, that's just the most obvious one, but mm -hmm. it seemed in contrast to the idea that we've been talking about, about encouraging students to learn about other cultures and history. Like everyone knows about Christmas, some kids know about Hanukkah, that's the time of year this comes up most often, but people don't know about a lot of other cultures and religions and even the cultural basis of those holidays, which is fine, we don't need to teach them that specifically, but it's tied into a lot of other things and history and geography and all kinds of things and that we are talking about promoting with our students and this policy seems i guess that sentence technically does allow that but for me when i read it it didn't seem like it um it's not a big enough deal you know, to rewrite the whole policy but that was my feeling in reading it that it, it along with the things we're talking about in this current day that it didn't quite feel to me like it encouraged discussion of those things as long as you're not mandating that this is like law if that makes sense um, mm -hmm. I agree with you. Uh, our suggestion is a very fine line between that, like yeah. balancing that, right? M making sure that it's inclusive, but also educational. I looked yeah. at it as more as if a child in a classroom is of a particular culture, religion, whatever it is, that maybe like, you know, it could be encouraged for them to share and teach mm -hmm. rather than say, no, no, we can't talk about any of this because right. um, I understand what you're saying, but I can see a lot of people say but if it's a school activity like a concert and if you're not covering everyone and representing everyone who's attending right. then it could be very insulting to some people yeah. as if it's exclusionary but i i kept it more as an individuality with our other policy where we talked about encouraging their individuality and encouraging a student's uh you know perspective or culture or religion and maybe encouraging them to be the ones also be able to share but yeah, I understand, and I don't know what the fine line is between juggling between that. And it, well, and it, as I said, it it's almost word for word like the other policy, the the MASC policy. So my guess is it came from legal situations, and it may be fine. I don't think it's a big enough issue to revise the whole policy that was just redone. But it just that was my perspective in reading it. So, so I think this I, is go ahead, Linda. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. So I was going to say, I think this is where um, policy and implementation comes in. And I think Brandon had talked about this before, is building the capacity to have conversations among the, the, the community. And if we go too fast without building that capacity, the knee-jerk mm -hmm. reaction 
says, well, they're taking this away, right? So like that yeah. whole music thing where they're taking away our Christmas music and how dare they, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's a situation where, yes, we had to be responsive to the, to the, to the law, mm -hmm. um, but without building capacity, it makes people feel like, well, I can't even say Merry Christmas anymore and da 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 right. all the loneliness that comes with that. Mm -hmm. um, right. And and rightfully so. I mean, people, no matter who you are, should not be discouraged to be able to share your um, your identity. And if religion right. is your identity, if a religion is part of your identity, you should be able to share that. Um, right. So I guess that's my 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 thinking is the policy, as you say, is is good. It's it's adequate. It's fine, and it it hits the mark. But how that gets implemented within our community. I think teachers should be able to have a conversation to build capacity so that they can feel like, hey, if somebody shares their identity, their religious identity, that you don't have to put the kibosh on that in class because it's part of who we right. are. And and that's um that's that's the implementation piece that, that so, follows yeah. after all of this. So here's the thing is you guys have actually um, I think laid out exactly where that line is. Um, of what the problem is, because this is the thing that just was mind boggling to me when I came to Massachusetts. I have to be honest, because this is a conversation that the school district I grew up in in the 80s and 90s had already came to the conclusion of if your students are singing the songs of other religions as a performance, then they are partaking in a religious observance of someone else's religion of their own. And it becomes proselytiz pros proselytizing. So that's where I personally have just, I, I'm just befuddled <laughs> by, by where we are in this conversation. Not, not here, but the wider mm -hmm. here. Um, mm. That being said, and that's just, sorry, it's something I had to get off my chest. Um, no. But the, <laughs> um, what I propose, if we wanna take up amending this at this state, is to take that bottom paragraph and put it up in the beginning and say the below is not to be interpreted to preclude, et cetera. And, and maybe there's more wordsmithing to be done in there. Um, but that would put into uh, the primacy of place, the idea of inclusion, celebrating, respecting um, the wider diversity of our culture, uh, of our uh, district and beyond. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> so, so that we're not like hurting people and upsetting them before they right. can get to the good part. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. give them all of the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> we don't want to cut off learning, conversation, exposure. But when we are doing those things, here's where we have to be respectful about not crossing lines that infringe on people's rights. Yeah. So that would be my proposal. I don't know if that's. Uh, something we want to take up at this point in time. Hmm. I mean, I definitely think that is a great idea. And maybe in our next meeting, starting off with this, as uh, when we're reviewing as one of our policies to bring that paragraph up up towards the front, like you had suggested. <clears throat> the, the one, at the, bottom. the sentence at the end of the third paragraph, or are we looking at the fourth paragraph? the the very last the one third. the above statements oh right i see Got and it. then oh, and then sorry. just change it to the below statement yeah you know right. or, or however that is not in the <laughs> masc policy so that was added by watch use it so that oh. makes sense we can mm -hmm. right. do whatever we and, want. and i think that whole I think, I think it's great to add it to the top like like linda suggested because yeah then it then then it's not an afterthought of the individuality it's so mm -hmm. yeah i agree i like that I agree too. That was a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. If it's, just, if it's just a strategic placement of wording and a changing of above to below, is that substantive a substantive enough change to, to need a, a motion and a vote on it? I mean not to avoid you know, uh, the, the whole school committee, but it, it seems like we're not really changing the, the spirit or wording of the, of, the, of the policy at all, just the organization of it. I don't know, just a thought. That's an excellent question. I have no idea. You know, I, I, I think, think 
Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Brenda. You know, I think it would qualify as a change, and we probably should yeah. have a vote, and especially with our wordsmithing here. You know, we could Fair enough. words right too. But I, I understand it may not be uh, worth it for that reason. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yep. I think as long as it's in there, you know, even if it's not in the perfect place, we could. I think we could um make a note a mental note or a note on our running list to revisit it maybe like in a year because then it would be two years since it was reviewed instead of one yeah and mm -hmm. and ha keep yeah. that like a, a list somewhere <laughs> yeah keep i think that living. makes sense i don't know if that makes sense but no but yeah. it do, i mean it doesn't take that long right to send it to school committee and have them no it's two readings yeah would would it be something like we we would table this until uh, uh, academic year 2021-2022? Yes. Yes, I think we, that makes sense. So then I would like to make a motion that we table policy 3240. Um, sorry, I'm right. That we. What? Sorry, where did I begin? <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we table policy 3240 until uh, the academic year 2021 to 22. Second. That's awesome. Let's go down the list. Member Long Belial. Uh, Long Belial, yes. Member Christianbaum. Yes. Member Woodland. Yes. Member Ayala. Yes. Member Bennett. Yes. Member Amos. Yes. Member Gustafson. Yes. And I, Chair, also votes yes, so that's unanimous. Um, our next item on the list is our next meeting date, and I know the 19th of, uh, of November was proposed. Um, so does, is everyone available 19th <coughs> at 7 p.m.? Um, yeah. That's a, a little so. tricky, but if it's fine for everyone, then, that, then I'll go with the flow. Yes, I'm available. I am, but... Are there people on our committee that are not available Thursdays? Because there's a couple people who haven't been to meetings. Oh, you know what? Scott wouldn't be, right? Because isn't that one legal? Thursday? Oh, right. Isn't, uh, aren't they on Thursdays? Yeah, they do. It's fine. It was just a logistical question. But I'm legal, fine. But... Legal actually met Tuesday because I sit in that as well. Oh, oh. oh okay. Very good. They've been negotiating later. Anyways, it doesn't matter. They've been You've been sitting in a lot of meetings. Having a yes, lot of meetings. He may, it might just be busy. I just wanted to make sure we weren't omitting anyone who can't meet Thursdays. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. okay. If that works, then let's do the 19th for 7 p.m. then. And then, and then the... So our extension um, is we'll have our survey out and we'll yeah. give them two weeks and that way... One of our major items on our agenda would be to review those comments on the 19th. Sounds good. Asma, can I bring up some uh, old business? Is, can this mm -hmm. sure. Sure. I think at, at our last meeting, we had discussed having the Google form for uh, student reporting and parent reporting of um, harassment uh, moved out of the website section yes. under parents and to yep. a place more uh, visible for students to mm -hmm. engage. And to my knowledge, and I checked today, it has not been moved yet. So Brennan, can you make sure that that happens? Thank you. I will, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, talked to Barry about that already. Our, no excuse, my tech department's been a little tapped, but um, yes, we will make that happen if we need to. Can I add something to that? Um, that was not sent out to any of the educators and principal Biando actually wasn't aware that this form existed. So can we email this to either at least all the principals or maybe even all the teachers? And then another suggestion that was brought up um, was to have it put on class Google Classroom pages. So if we could encourage teachers to put that on class Google Classroom pages, so that students know that it's available. And that... Yes. So, Absolutely. Uh, it should be available or at on least every, all, all yeah, pages. I think I thought originally there was discussion of putting it on every um, school page, but 
if it, I don't think I've seen it on it, the couple. It's going, yeah, I, I just want to make sure that um, yeah. just to correct the because yeah. uh, it's important that yeah, it was actually sent out to all principals and APs uh, prior to our last meeting. Sorry, it's just getting some interference here. Um, so it was sent out. Um, and it will be going out to um, all faculty and staff as well. But all administrators have had it for a few weeks. Great. Could I ask? Uh, awesome. That was good. Brendan, I had asked you um, earlier about this. Has, has the form been used at all? And have there been any other any reports so far this year using any method of, of bullying or? Um, so the form has not been used yet. We haven't gotten any, um, and I have to be careful about sharing those kind of things because sometimes it can, you know, I have to be pretty vague about those things, um, yeah. just so it's not identifiable. Um, and we have not had any, um, to my knowledge, uh, so far, any bullying reports for this academic year. Good news. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact mm -hmm. they're remote right now probably has something to something Huge. to do with it, but we all know that, that, that <laughs> bullying does happen online. Yeah. So. You know, but even so, yeah, there's always a silver lining somewhere, or often yeah. is. There is. <laughs> so, I, yep. And I just want to mention, uh, can I mention one, just as we're wrapping up, um, I'm, I was, uh, so it was an opportunity that I got recently, I was pretty excited about. Um, it's called Supporting Change Advocates Series. So this is on, I'll send this out uh, through Rebecca. It's put on by the Greater Worcester Community Foundation, the Coalition for a Healthy Greater Worcester and the Boston Public Health Commission. So it was an application process to build leadership skills um, for people in the Worcester area around supporting uh, and systemic change. So it came up, I applied, and I was able to get in. So it oh. starts tomorrow, and um, you know, I'm pretty excited about it. I think there's two parts that are great. It, it'll help with the leadership aspect, which I'm always looking to improve. But the second piece is networking with people in the area that are doing similar work. So I could see us integrating um, those partnerships within our work. So just want to mention that, you know. Congratulations. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Wonderful. Congratulations. Just, just as if you weren't busy enough. That's <laughs> in the brain. Yeah. You said you like to be busy. Well, the Community <laughs> Foundation does a lot of really great programs like that, networking across the region. So that's a really great thing to know about. Yeah, I'm, I'm an incorporator for them. Oh, nice. so Brendan, um, one last thing, I guess, the follow up to that is uh, if you have uh, any requests of us to support you in this or any other endeavor, uh, there are resources and, and things, um, you know, I want to encourage you to mm -hmm. course, bring them through the superintendent to our attention, but also through this format as well. Yeah. Um, you know, the more we get to know what is needed within the district, the more we can respond to the needs of the district. Right. Mm -hmm. And related to that, um, just my last thing, and it's to your point, um, we had a meeting also with the DEEP uh, project, which you know, we talked about them yes. in the last meeting, I believe. And more to come about that. We had a really positive meeting. Um, it endorsed what we're doing on this subcommittee as far as looking at policy as an initial step. And um, as being, uh, we have to be so careful about our steps into this work as we talked about as we build this house together. So uh, they really endorse that as the right way to go because they actually said sometimes they'll come into districts and they have to undo a lot of damage because of well-meaning initiatives that were the window dressing of equity and not necessarily mm -hmm. the, uh, the real work of systemic change. So anyways, uh, more to come on that, but it was a very positive meeting and I think they were enthusiastic about working with us. Awesome. All right. Thank That's you. really good. Yeah. Great. We're getting there. I think we're at the point if anybody wants to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> that took a while. <laughs> no, we have no, fun, guys. Have I'm like, should <laughs> we be seconding that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's good on the list? Member Longalio. Aye. Uh, member Christian Mom. Yes. Member Woodland. Yes. Member Ayala. Yes. Member Bennett. Bennett, yes. Member Amos. Yes. Member Gustafson. Yes. 
and the chair votes yes. So thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye bye. I'll stop recording here.